Hiya folks, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This week I'm going to be painting a vase to give a terracotta look. So a couple of videos ago I staged a piece with some terracotta pots that were in fact painted. You guys all wanted a longer video of it, so I've got this vase from a charity shop. You can paint any vase, probably not an antique, you can paint whatever you like. I'm going to use this, it was less than £2 from a charity shop, so I'm going to make this look like this. Okay, first things first, as always, is a little bit of prep. And that goes for any piece that you are going to be painting, whether it's home decor or furniture. So, in my spray bottle, which is an old cleaning bottle, I've got a, a mixture of Dixie Bell's White Lightning and water. And that gives me a cleaning solution, and I use that for smaller items like this vase, Smaller pieces of furniture, I just find it more convenient than mixing a solution in a bucket. I'm going to spray it all over and then give it a rub with my microfiber cloth. This is just going to get rid of any grease, grime, dirt, residue, dust on the surface and leave it nice and clean, ready for the next step. And once you've cleaned it all over, just make sure that you rinse it with clean warm water to remove any cleaning product residue off your piece. Next, once your piece is dry, we're gonna prime it. So the primer that I'm using is an adhesion primer from Dixie Bell Paint. It's called Slick Stick. I will put in the description all the products that I use below, as I always do in my videos, just in case you miss them or want to refer back to them at any point. I'm using a synthetic brush because I don't want too much texture, but I want a little bit of texture. So I am using a synthetic brush, and I think the one that I'm using is an oval medium. And I am stippling the primer over the surface of the vase. So stippling is basically just pouncing the brush with the tips of the bristles, instead of brushing it on as you would traditionally. This is just gonna give me a little bit of texture and when you are priming a very slippy surface like glass, metal, plastic, laminate, which Slick Stick is perfect for, I do find that stippling it does make the coverage slightly better and also it just means that you don't have any brush strokes on your piece. But bear in mind, if you do stipple your primer on the surface like I'm doing, you will get a little bit of texture. So if you don't want texture, just stick to the traditional method of brushing or rollering it on to get a smoother finish. I'm just doing it this way because I do want a little bit of texture on the surface of this, just to make it look a little bit more like authentic terracotta. What I also do on my vases is, once I've done the outside, I will just take the primer down the neck of the inside of the vase a few inches. I normally just do it sort of where it would sort of naturally, your eye would naturally see into the vase. Like I say, I only use these pieces for staging props. I'm not gonna sell these or anything. If you are gonna sell it, you might wanna tape off a straight line or go down a little bit further into the vase and definitely do the base of the vase as well, which again, I don't do because I'm only using it for staging, but I definitely do just that inner lip, just so that when you are photographing and videoing the piece, like I do, um, you don't see the original finish inside. I'm gonna speed this step up because it is just a repeat of the previous step. So I'm adding a second coat of Slick Stick and it's really important that you follow the instructions of this product for it to basically work properly. So Slick Stick requires two coats and the first coat needs to dry thoroughly, so between two to four hours. The second coat needs to be dried for 24 hours before you can apply your paint. That's because it's a water-based product and if you apply your paint sooner, you risk reactivating the product and it won't do its job. So it is one of those products that you do kind of have to read the instructions and do as you're told, but basically one coat, allow it to dry for two to four hours, 
second coat, allow it to dry for 24 hours before you add your paint. So the colours that I'm going to use are terracotta and pinecone, both in the chalk mineral paint range from Dixie Bell. Terracotta, as the name would suggest, is a perfect shade to make terracotta pots. However, I do like to shade it a little bit with pinecone, hence the addition of that colour. I decant my paint onto a paper plate because I don't want too much product on my brush. I'm also going to mix the product on the plate a little bit. So the first coat, if you saw what I did with my brush, I dipped it in the terracotta, I dabbed it in a little bit of the pine cone and then dabbed the excess off onto the side of the plate. And then I'm just going to do exactly the same motion, that stippling motion that I did before, to basically cover the entire pot in that mixture. It might look a little patchy, but that's okay. We're gonna do a second coat. Here's what it looks like after that first coat. Hopefully you can see little bits where that terracotta and pine cone is sort of been stippled together. And here's what it looks like when it's completely dried down. As you can see, we do need a second coat on there, but it is building up nicely. The second coat is pretty much identical to the first, except that I do use slightly less of the pine cone colour and more of the terracotta colour. And that's just because I feel like it gets a little bit too brown otherwise. It is personal preference and terracotta isn't all one colour. Um, you see some terracotta that's very brown and some that's very orange. I prefer mine a little bit more muted because I'm going for kind of that aged terracotta look. So I do add a little bit of brown on the second coat, but again, you can add as much or as little as you like. Usually you'll only need two coats because the paint covers exceptionally well. However, it just depends on the piece that you are painting and your thickness of your coats of colors that you're applying. But I only did two coats on all of the vases that I've done previously. So you can see the difference of the base layer. It's got a lot more brown sort of to it. And I am gonna add a little bit more brown shading around the very base and the top, just to add that little bit of dimension. So once I've built up that second coat, what I tend to do is find some areas that I want to add some shade in. As I just mentioned, I add a little bit of pine cone around the base and the lip most of the time, but it does depend on the shape of the vase or jar or whatever it is you're painting. You might want to add some shading in some other areas. Um, like I say, it's personal preference, but basically all I do is I use exactly the same brush that I've just done the coat of paint with. Whilst the paint is still wet, you can see it hasn't dried yet. I'm just adding pine cone around the very, very base of the jar. Again, same stippling motion. And I'm just blending that out into the terracotta. So it's a very sort of gentle shading effect that I'm gonna add around the base. And again, like I say, it's personal preference where you add this, or even if you add this at all, it's just something I like to do because I think it makes it look a little bit more authentic. And then once everything's dry, I'm gonna add a little bit of dry brushing in some white. I'm using the color Fluff and I'm using the Best Dang brush. You can see I've hardly got any paint on my bristles. I'm taking as much of that paint off as possible. I have covered dry brushing in a previous video, but essentially you need the minimal amount of paint on that brush as possible. So you almost need to take it all off. You can see I'm rubbing and rubbing and rubbing until you have hardly any paint left. And obviously the piece is completely dried down and I'm just using swirl marks to dry brush that fluff over the top of the vase. I'm not pressing on hard and I'm just really, really softly swirling it over the neck, so well, the sort of wider bit of the vase. 
and if you do look at old terracotta you do find that it tends to have that sort of white sort of film on it i don't even know what it is in fact i do i should know what it is because when i did this on a live video um i had one of my viewers that was watching she actually googled it and i think it's something to do with water content that seeps through the terracotta and leaves a sort of residue on the exterior of the pot i think i could be wrong Anyway, if you do look at old terracotta, you will notice that very often it's got a white sort of haze to the exterior. Almost it looks like a glaze. So I am just replicating that effect with some light dry brushing in the colour fluff. You don't have to do this step if you prefer not to, or you could go really heavy with it. Some terracotta I've seen is almost looks like it's been bleached white. So you could do that if you wanted to. Again, it's down to personal preference, how much you add of this and where you add it as well. But I just like to think of it as a bit of a highlighter. It stops it all being one color. So we've added the pine cone around the base and the lip just to add that bit of shading. And then the white is just gonna be a sort of highlighter. And you can basically add as much of that dry brushing detail as you like. So I don't actually seal my pots because I only use them for photographs and staging. But if you did want to seal them, I would suggest Easy Peasy Spray Wax because it has a matte finish. And here's some shots of some completed vases that I've already done. You might have already seen them on the bench that I did a few weeks ago. And I've also taken a picture of them in my living room. And there we go, quick and simple, easy way to make this terracotta look out of something you might already have knocking around that you don't like anymore, or something that you pick up um, at a secondhand store and you can give it a new lease of life. So I hope you liked the video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel for more painting videos.